Hello everyone, welcome back, KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts, and guys, it's been a long time since I've been able to get on HF and just play around with Ham Radio. What I have here is my Icom 705, my little Gigaparts Wedge 3D printed stand that they sent me a while ago, and I put up the Chameleon Tactical Delta Loop outside, so this weekend I'm going to try to make a couple contacts. I did make some contacts to Boston, to Texas, and I think Colorado on 17 meters. And I heard the Italian station, he tried to get me, he couldn't, but that's 10 watts with the bio in a battery into my 705, and an antenna that's pretty much resonant on most vans outside. Now what I wanna show you in this video is this cool little Chinese battery-powered pocket size automatic antenna tuner. Now you're not gonna see one like this. Why? Because I bought this about seven months ago, and then I forgot about it, I got slow on making videos, and now, this thing here is in different variants. So I'm gonna show you on this video a couple links on Amazon. I'll give you the links in the description to what the essentially this is. Essentially, this is a clone of the ATU100 by N7DDC, which is an automatic antenna tuner. This is QRP to QRO. I'm guessing it's gonna handle up to 100 watts. And you'd simply push the button and talk and it will tune. It automatically tunes within seconds. Not even two, three seconds, it's tuned. And you can do it manually. And there's a lot of stuff it tells you on the screen about the efficiency, the capacitance and inductance that it did tell, it did use to make the tune, your power output, and the actual efficiency and power output to your antenna because you're not tuning your antenna, guys. You're matching your radio to an unmatched antenna to make it happy. I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. If that's the case, then why does it tell me what's actually going to the antenna? Because it's going to lose a lot of efficiency by tuning a high SWR to your radio, but I don't normally use tuners. I use antennas that are resonant, but in the field, having something like this in my go kit, which is small enough to put with my 705 in the Pelican case, it's on battery. I could charge it with solar. I could charge this with solar and I could use any antenna pretty much 160 to almost six meters. I say six meters because this thing did actually recognize and tune on six meters. So I call it six meters, but this thing's pretty cool. It's got a little very basic menu structure, and I'm gonna show you where you can get something like this and what it will do right here on Ham Radio Concepts. Ham Radio Concepts is brought to you by hamradioprep.com. It's never been easier to learn about ham radio before you take the exam. And Ham Radio Prep makes it fun and guarantees your success. Visit hamradioprep.com. Use the code ERIC20 to instantly save 20% off every course you buy. Remember the name, hamradioprep.com. So here's a little battery powered metal chassis, OGS 3D automatic antenna tuner. Again, you're not gonna see this. All right, I guess they changed it or maybe they ran a run of these and they gave up on it, I'm not sure. So I'll call this one of a kind as well. <laughs> so the, the switch over here, you know, goes up, down, left, right, all right? And the newer models have a uh, more of a knob on it here. This doesn't have a knob, it's kind of like a, a joystick without a knob on it. The screen here, a picture of a mouse and the battery indicator is on, or power indicator is on the mouse nose. Not sure why I did that. Um, and on the back here, you know, a charger port, which is not proprietary, but it's like an inverted, uh, it's a small DC barrel jack, okay, uh, that you charge it with. And it's got a USB on the other end. So you could charge this from a USB solar panel, from, you know, uh, a lot of different ways out in the field. Portability is the name of the game. Being able to be out there in the field and charge this thing with the power of the sun free, that's the name of the game. Two SO 239s. If you want to take it apart, there is Allen screws. But I'm going to show you what's inside this before we get into it anymore is this. This is pretty much what's happening in there, okay? Now, there's relays on here. There's inductors for inductance. And there's capacitors for capacitance here, surface mount. And you have SMAs for in and out. You have a toroid here and or a, uh, yeah, whatever you call it. A uh, little, little coil here, some resistors over here, uh, an IC chip, and then uh, a couple electrolytic capacitors here. And it uh, looks like a transistor, a diode. And here's your battery in and out for your power and your cables for the screen here, okay? This, here's the screen on this one, right? Actually, the screen that comes with the AT100 kit is different than what's in mine, right? And then your little 
cables that connect from this to that. So that's what's inside this thing without me having to take it apart. But what it's doing is as it detects the input, it's going to use the appropriate inductance and capacitance through different relays, okay, all through here with the traces to come up with the, the best match for the lowest SWR for your radio to be happy. You're creating a match so your radio is happy to a non-matched, perfectly matched antenna. Okay, that's what this is bottom line is doing. Okay, so uh, to turn this on, you would basically hold this up. Actually, yeah, there it goes. Okay, now again, the, the new ones might not be like that. They might be different. On the screen here, you'll see you have on the top left, your power output, your bottom left, your SWR, top right, the inductance, bottom right, the capacitance. And if you hit down, you'll see tune or reset. So when you're in tune mode, it's automatically going to tune when it detects an RF signal. It's going to see the SWR on your antenna, the RF coming in from the radio, and it's going to tune it. It only takes a second or two. You'll hear the relays. I'll show you. There's a little menu if you hold to the left. Okay, this does say QRP to QRO. So what I understand is that would be set to 100 watts, I guess. I set it to 10 watts, which would be one, because that's what I'm using maximum output from the 705. And we hit down minimum SWR. You know, what's the minimum SWR? I go all the way to about 1.2 right there. And then max power 90, we're gonna go down to 10. And then I'm not sure what that is, S-R-C-D-E-L, not sure what that is. Loss indicator on, losses 12, not sure what that is, because I can't find a manual on this, all right? And that's it. So um, if I hold that back down, it goes back to the main screen. And I'm going to transmit in here. I'm going to show you that, and, and this is blinking because the battery's almost dead. I've been using this for mostly all day for testing to make this video, not because I need it. The Chameleon Delta Loop outside does not need this tuner. That's the cool thing about Chameleon antennas. So if you want to turn it off, twice up. That took me forever to figure out how to turn this thing off and on. All right, so we have some solar noise from my solar off-grid RV right here. I have the tuner connected. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this practically easy to understand. A constant carrier into this, like on FM or AM, would give you the best results. But if I do that on a video, I'm going to get yelled at by my YouTubers because certain bands and certain, you can't have certain modes. You can't transmit FM on 40 and yada, yada. So you don't have to, though. I can take this and talk into it and it will tune. I'm going to show you. There's somebody on 20 to 4, so we're going to go down here. And I'm just going to throw out my call sign and watch up here and watch here. This is the SWR that the radio is seeing from this. This is the SWR result. Ready? KJ4YZI testing. Do you see how fast that drop it down? KJ4YZI. 1.28 to 1. Now, where I can transmit FM is up here in the FM portion, just to give you an idea of what happens. Ready? I'm going to put FM. Now watch. I'm just going to transmit my call sign with the constant carrier on FM. You're going to see it's going to drop that thing almost flat. Ready? KJ4YZI testing. Do you see that? Is the frequency in use? KJ4YZI. 1.05 to 1. Now, if I were to use AM or FM on certain bands in a constant carrier, it, yeah, but I don't want to do that. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We'll go to 20 meters. Okay. Watch. I'll just talk into it. Watch the SWR. Watch it. Is the frequency in use? KJ4 or YZI? 1.19 to 1, 1.2 to 1. Okay. And again, this antenna is not non-resonant on most of those bands. So this tuner 
is probably causing more loss than the antenna will do without it. All right, but let's go down to 80 meters. All right, watch. KJ4YZI testing. KJ4YZI, 1.13 to 1. It tunes that fast. So just bear with me for a second. I'm going to put some links in the description. I want you to see a couple of models that are not like mine and some that are like the one I'm showing you in this video, just so you don't buy the wrong one and get misled. The links will be in the description. This kind of looks just like mine, doesn't it? Maybe different wording and stuff, but it is not battery powered. You know, it's $100. And it does do 100 watts. And it looks kind of reminiscent of mine, except it is not battery powered, right? Now, if you go back and you look at ATU 100, if you search that or click the links in the description, it'll give you all these. Um, so like for instance, this one here, this is uh, right here. This one's sort of like mine. Now it's got uh, you know a couple option menu things with a USB-C for charging. The screen actually looks more like mine. And this one is battery powered, okay? So if you go down here, and go all the way down, all the way down. Um, lithium battery right here, 3,000 milliamps. It only uses 400 milliamps of current consumption, but it's 3,000 milliamp battery built in. And this will do up to uh, working throughput 100 watts and power measurement up to 150, right? So that's another one that looks like mine or doesn't look like mine, but works like mine. But that only does up to 30 megahertz see that some of them will do up to six meters which would be like um this one here 160 to six meters 109 dollars but does it have a battery built in if you want a battery you know you may not want a battery powered one that's fine there's a lot of variants of this thing out here um this one says one lithium iron battery required included so this one does have a battery built in right here 1350 milliamp hour battery included okay so that gives you an idea of a couple of different ones and there's a lot of variants on here like i said if you want to do a do-it-yourself kit and you want to get this you can wind your own little coils and toro you know inductors whatever and solder all your pieces and relays and do it yourself or here's a thousand watt version look at this 148 dollars for a thousand watt uh, version of what I showed you okay and and you could put this stuff you know um, these these do-it-yourself boards like I showed you here's one up here right 42 bucks so if you want to put this in your uh, you know homemade SDR or your bit X or some sort of home brew transceiver and have an automatic antenna tuner built inside you can get one like this already made or you know put it somewhere in there and run the in and out from your you know PA final section to the SA239 in the back of the radio and away you go. So these links are in the description, but really I just typed in ATU100 antenna tuner, but I'll give you uh, three or four of the links of what I put in and a link that should take you to the search result because people are always going to ask, wait a second, Eric, what's the difference between this one and this one? Well, it looks to be the battery and or the working range of the frequency. That's where they're all at. FT8, look, 5.9 on FT8, look at this. Oh my gosh, there, there you go. There they are, there they are. Wait a second, wait. There they are, look. There is the tuner video here, the OGS 3D automatic antenna tuner. What do I think? You know, for like what I paid for it, the 60 something dollars from China, it's it's going to be in my go kit. And the, the reason is, is because somebody's going to have an antenna out there that I need to connect to that's not going to be worth a damn. And I need to use a tuner. Now, there are tuner options better than this for the ICOM 705. I've seen them. They exist and they're way more money. But again, if you're interested in building your own radio, Consider one of these for like $38, excuse me, $38, $38, right? You could put this in your radio and just, I mean, that's pretty neat to have that built into your radio. You know, the final output section in the here, then output to the SO239 in the back. Pretty cool. That's it, guys. More videos are on the way. 
I will be parked right here as I normally am. And uh, maybe I'll put this outside, do some uh, poolside CQ operation this evening. 7-3 everyone, KJ4YZI.